What's up guys, your boy Leg Day is back with another series of videos and this time we're going to be talking about the Shanghai Masters Invitational hosted by Shanghai Dragons that happened in the last week. We're going to be doing videos about all of the different teams with a couple of collaborators. You can find four videos, two of them are going to be here on my channel, I'm going to be covering Shanghai and Guangzhou Charge. You can find a video on the Chengdu Hunters over at Kenobi's channel and a video on the Hongzhou Spark over at Jiro's channel. I'll be putting those down in the description so make sure to check out the sister videos in this series and without further Further ado, let me tell you seven things we learned about Shanghai Dragons ever the Shanghai Masters. The first thing we learned is that Shanghai Dragons right now are looking pretty damn good. They picked up Moon as their new head coach and they didn't drop a map throughout the entirety of the tournament going 0-7 to take the win. And it seems like Moon has really got everybody on the same page with this roster, which is incredibly impressive given that they basically have a full roster now with a lot of rotation going on. And Moon right here, I think, is definitely putting stocks back up after the uh, the shenanigans that happened with the LA Valiant earlier on in the year. With uh, Kuki being put onto main support. Because you know what? Sometimes your players are just too intelligent for the rest of your team. And you've got to hold them on back. Sorry, Custer. The second thing we saw regarding Shanghai Dragons is they're using all four of their DPS players. We've got DM, we've got Ding, we've got Flutter, and the new guy Lip coming in from Blossom. Every single one of them got playtime during Shanghai Masters, and if this continues into the 2020 season, which could be smart given all the traveling that needs to happen, you could put two DPS in for one particular leg of travel, and then two DPS in for the other to make sure that everyone's feeling rested. But at the same time, if you're playing all four of the DPS and not really having any permanently benched players who are more just there for substitution roles. And that's going to mean that each of them is getting less scrim time overall, and Moon's going to have to be very wary of that when preparing this team for upcoming matches. And that brings us neatly on to point number three, which is that Lip, the unknown coming in from Blossom, kicks booties and he takes names. A man had a lot of good showing here at the Shanghai Masters. He managed to play a lot of Reaper to a very high degree, and we saw a little bit of flexing here and there as well onto Sombra and onto Hanzo as well. But given that he's a scan DPS, and that we didn't see McCree or Widowmaker, there could be a couple of legitimate worries amongst fans as to whether he has the hero pool of a hit scan that is required across multiple metas, or if he is going to be just put on the bench for DM during a more flick aim intensive meta, we saw a little bit of Doomfist as well, but it wasn't overly impressive from Lip. Overall, though, quite an effective first showing from the new DPS player. And for our fourth, we're going to stay on Lip. The man is an actual colossus. He is so tall. Look at him here next to Void being interviewed. The man is gargantuan. If you actually go to LAN and see him, you aren't going to fight him at LAN. You're going to witness him at LAN. Lip is all about the intimidation factor. He will cast a shadow on you. He's going to unnerve any opponents at land because the man just takes up space, dude. Like, he's got his own gravitational field. He's huge. But let me drag you back a second from just gazing at the enormity of Lip's frame to talk about Gaguri. We only saw Gaguri during one map during Shanghai Masters, but she was playing Orissa. And that could be important because currently there are three off tanks, Void, Envy, and Gaguri on the Shanghai Dragons roster, and that could mean that with those three off tanks, Moon is actually pushing for Higuri to move into a main tank role, so that she and Stand 1 can rotate, as we've said the DPS may have to, in order to try and make sure that there's less burnout on either side, and that there's always a new strategy that can be bought out for matches by surprise if an enemy team is not expecting it. For number 6, we're going to stick with the tank line, but we're going to talk about the new acquisition of Void this time. The Overwatch League veteran who was recently brought up by the Shanghai Dragons was definitely a great investment. He looks on point with both Stand 1 and Gaguri in that off-tank role. The man is synergizing so quickly, likely thanks to the coaching of Moon and the significant support that the Shanghai Dragons have. He's doing very well on these fragging off-tanks like Sigma. He's bringing out the Roadhog as well, and I can't wait to see what he can do in the further metas, especially if we go back to the Diva meta, where he did play very well with Kongdu Panthera previously, along with Fisher. It's not going to have Fisher with him this time. It's going to be Stan 1 and Gaguri like we said before, but... Void, I think, is really going to be a huge blessing for this team. I've always rated him highly. Last but not least, as the seventh thing we've learned, is that Li Gone was definitely a huge investment for Shanghai Dragons. They're looking like they're all on the same page, despite how young this roster is in terms of the time they've had to build synergy. Evidently, the course coming from Li Gone, the ult tracking, the battle plan, the movement, they're all being adhered to very strictly 
by this team. It feels like Moon has been building it from the ground up to listen to the commands when Lee Jagon throws them out. He was very effective for Runaway. It looks like he's going to be doing the same thing for Dragons. And if this keeps up, it will be a very successful season for both Lee Jagon and the team as a whole. Okay, so those are seven things we've learned, but I've got a little bit of a bonus one, which is more speculation, so I'm not counting as a real thing that we've learned over the course of Shanghai Masters. And that's that out of the four players, given that D is a two-way now, Envy is the only one who we didn't see for a single map at Shanghai Masters. I'm not sure if he was present, but this may lead us to believe that Shanghai are looking to trade the off-tanks, and so they've got three on their roster. And when you think of places that he could go, maybe London, although I wouldn't rate that incredibly likely, could go to Florida Mayhem, who have just re-signed Gargoyle by maybe looking for a second off-tank. And of course, Fate and Envy do have previous experience working together on both LA Valiant and Immortals before that. So there's potential that, that could be Envy's fate. If not, he may have just not gone to Shanghai and they're going to be ready for him to join the team in the actual 2020 season. Only time will tell. So there you have it guys, seven little crumbs of information we found out from Shanghai Masters and a touch of speculation from my brain to yours. There's going to be a couple more videos on the other teams that we saw at the event as well. You can find out all about the Hangzhou Spark over at Geo's channel. Chengdu Hunter is going to be featured on Kenobi's channel. You can find both of those in the description and I'll be covering Guangzhou Charge later on this one. So make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, comment and tell me what I missed, what you think that you learned about this team at Shanghai Masters and I will see you all in the next one. Yeah,